Why is it that 90% of all communication is non-verbal and how could it be that 80% of all professionals have little knowledge of body language? Did you know that mastering body language can give you an additional global language yielding amazing results? What if you would be able to master those new voices, new questions, new techniques, new perspectives, new challenges with only one goal, new and better results? Hi, I'm Renee de Kooning. I'm a master in body language, motivational speaker, coach, trainer, and I'm running an exclusive international company. Since 1995, I've been delivering enriching insights and results-oriented outcomes to my clients. My seminars, keynotes and trainings around the world are changing businesses with amazing levels of positive increase and I've shared stages with Brian Tracy, Jake Robbins, Jack Canfield and many other influential speakers. Now what is body language? In reading and in writing, there's a grammar attached to it. Body language has no grammar. It's an expression of how we feel, how we think, how we process. And once you discover this within, you can then discover it with someone else. You will see what's never being said in meetings and business and sales, and you will increase your business results. You will raise your self-confidence. You will pull people towards you instead of pushing them away from you. You'll understand clearly what is meant by what people say and immediately discover a lie versus the truth. It was a true honor meeting Tum Kemakon from Thailand Image Academy in 2018 and I admire the work he's delivering. Now today more than ever you must accept that your appearance, your image will attract people towards you or push them away from you. The sentence that I'm going to project now is a sentence you have to think about. Become a mind true body reader and see what's never been said. And what I mean about that, the moment you can start reading the body signs, you can actually read the mind. This is a very important sentence for you having a hair salon uh, and, and, and dealing with your customers, with your clients. But if you can read the signs, you can read the mind and you can moderate a conversation. You can turn a negative conversation into a positive one, okay? You can literally moderate by reading the signs of the body. Now, the next step is when two people are communicating and what happens is, again, we have that conscious mind and that subconscious mind. The conscious mind is when you are speaking to somebody or you taste something or you touch something, that's conscious, that's just in the moment. Would you agree, right? Subconscious is your hard disk. Whatever you went through in life is on the hard disk. And it stays there forever, whether you like it or not. Okay? Now, when you go to sleep, how many of you wake up and say, oh my God, I hope I keep breathing when I'm sleeping. How many of you do that? Nobody. And then you go, oh, well, I woke up this morning. So you go back to sleep. And then you wake up again. How oh. I do hope my heart keeps on beating when I'm sleeping, right? How many of you do that? Nobody. Because you woke up this morning. You don't even think about it. And that's the subconscious mind that works 24-7 and takes care of all of that. You don't have to worry. The subconscious mind works 24-7, right? Now, if I ask you a question, a rational question, what's the agenda like for tomorrow? And you look up to the right answering my question, that, makes, that, that means you're making a construction. If you look to the left on an emotional question, that means there's a memory. How was your trip to Egypt last year? And you go like, oh, wow, yeah, I remember. Oh, we do that all the time. We look in a certain direction, right? That means you are recollecting a memory, an emotional thing. Left, left eye, remember? Your left eye is the emotional eye. Construction, right eye, okay? So sometimes you are, spe how many of you never lie? Please raise your hand and say yes. How many of you never, never lie? Never, never? That's the first lie for today. And <laughs> Congratulations, yeah, indeed. <laughs> so now, when I ask an emotional question, 
And I said, hey, how was your trip to Egypt last year? And I go like, um, rational, construction. Why? You shouldn't remember it. For me, it's not a lie, but it's a red flag. If I have too many of these red flags, I, I'm dealing with somebody who's lying to me. Anything? You start with the feet. And why is that? The feet are the body parts the furthest from the brain, the less controllable. So the feet will tell you far more than all the rest of the body. Right? And then you go from the bottom to the top. That's how you read body language. Now, the second way of reading the body language is when you can see and you can hear. So you're in a restaurant, you're sitting next to a table, and you can't help it. You're overhearing the conversation. And then you can start thinking like, hey, is this person a red, a yellow, a green, or a blue one? Because the conversation is so interesting. I would like to connect with these people. But I've, I, first of all, I'm going to listen what they say and how they say it so I can find out if they are extrovert, introvert, emotional, rational, right? And that's how it works. Now, the third way to analyze body language is you can see, you can listen, and you can ask questions. Which questions? Anybody? Open questions, thank you. You're too close oh. and you're like, well, oh, just a minute, right? So pay attention, you don't do it yourself, okay? Now, we're gonna, I'm going to show you some body language, like postures and gestures to, or to watch out for. If you want to have a good relationship with your clients, with your family, with strangers, with anybody, right? Pay attention to these things. However, if you can uh, read body language, make sure to also apply it. Right? Apply it first and then read. And if you can apply it and you can read it, then you can moderate conversations with using the right body language. Okay? If I would say you, do you, I, okay? Now, when you shake hands with somebody, make sure you don't crush their hands, right? Anybody had that feeling from somebody? Like, Hi, how you doing? <laughs> right? Make sure you don't do it yourself. Now, make sure to not have that fishy hand, right? If I had a handshake from somebody, you'd go like, ah, ah. <laughs> <Right>? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Don't do it yourself, though. Right? Make sure when you give a handshake, it's a straightforward one. And squeeze it, like the picture above on the, on the top, for 50%. That means a firm handshake. Right? Now, some people feel it, have the need to be dominant. And what they do, they put their hand on top. And then the other person says, oh, put their hand on top. <laughs> like this, yeah. However, the one who starts dominating, dominates in the end. Can I have your help? Can you assist? Here in front. So what I mean is, you just want to make sure that everybody sees it. So I give you a hand like this as a firm handshake, right? Mm -hmm. But some people give a hand and they do this. How you doing? Cool. You put your elbows on top because you want to dominate the conversation, right? But I have one left. <laughs> oh my God, you're such a great guy. <laughs> you're right. So using your fingers to accentuate something, what is very important here is to know that this, I will tell you something, Sophia, listen very carefully. How does that feel? Victimize, threaten, Less exactly, it's very arrogant, it's very dominant, it's very not done. Now, people accentuate sometimes like this. How many of you know the heavy metal band Iron Maiden from the 80s? Right? They had a song, 666, the number of the beast. This is, in a lot of cultures, the sign of the devil. If you do this in France, it is very offensive. And sometimes people are doing a lecture or they have a workshop. Let me tell you something. If you have a French audience, you're done. And in certain cultures, other cultures as well. When you accentuate something, use your index finger and your thumb and make it as flat as possible. And then accentuate something. I have a lot of clients who are politicians. And I always have to tell them, stop doing what you're doing. Do this. Okay? So if you are a public speaker or you want to explain something to somebody and you want to accentuate something, as flat as possible.
right? Got it? We're almost there. <laughs> I have to respect the time. Now, when you have that roof, your hands in the roof, right? And a lot of speakers use that. Angela Merkel in Germany, the chancellor, she's like this all the time. I made a picture with 20 pictures of her in different situations. She's always, always like this. And I wrote on top, stop playing with super glue. Because she's always like that, <laughs> right? But somebody who is speaking like this is somebody that knows what they're talking about, they're very well prepared, and they have an answer ready for every single question. Very, uh, there's a person with a lot of confidence, right? Now, I had a guy in real estate in London. He followed my course, and the very first video they made, he was like, wow. It has to be natural. Don't exaggerate, okay? Okay, next. Is there anybody that could tell me what you see? Please? Cold, nervousness, discomfort, anything else? There's something specific in each picture that comes back. Glo Who says thumbs? Thumbs, Greg. Whenever you see thumbs, I could explain each picture in detail, for sure. But when you see thumbs, that's a positive energy. I've got a picture on my website, on the About page, with my arms crossed. And people say, yeah, but that is closed. True, but watch a little bit closer. I've got one thumb sticking out in that picture. So a lot of managers crosses their arms, and they're like closed. But when you close your arms, and you have one thumb sticking out, check my website, you'll find out that's a positive energy, a positive vibration. Okay? So showing thumbs is positive, no matter what position you're in. We're almost there. This picture is a specific picture that you have to pay attention to when you are in conversation with somebody. How do you analyze body language? Remember, is there anybody? The feet first. What do you see in the feet here? Anybody? Okay. Okay. Let me tell you this. He is grabbing her arm, and he wants to say something very quickly to her. Why? One foot is pointing towards her, and the other uh, foot is pointing away in the direction he wants to leave the conversation in this moment. So when I'm talking to you, and one foot is pointing that way, and I'm talking to you, and you see this, wrap up the conversation because you don't have my full attention. I want to leave. So if you are in a conversation with somebody like that, look at the feet, right? One eye up, one eye. Oh, no, don't do that because that sounds very horrible. <laughs> but make sure you see the feet, right? And if one foot is pointing away, wrap up the conversation, say, hey, time is expensive. Do you have your agenda with you? Let's, po let's, uh, uh, let's put down an, a new uh, appointment. And, and then, yeah, you know, and, and then the person will say, oh, wow. And they will be happy. And they will be happy to leave. So tips and tricks. First one, read body language starting with the feet and go up, right? Second one, if you are going to an interview for a job or you are the interviewer, Make sure to have a glass top table so you can see what's happening under the table. Because you would be surprised what's happening under the table. You'll be surprised. I've done that a million times. <laughs>